Alright guys, welcome to another episode that was requested by Booball this time. And he said, um, could you please explain the sorted sprite test uh, that is right here. And yes I can. Um, it's a really simple test actually, it's just um, a test of the, where is it, um, array.sort method basically. And this is what we're going to use. But we'll not explain exactly this test here. We'll just write our own one, which does essentially the same thing. Because writing your own stuff is usually simpler. So let's go ahead and create a new screen, which is going to be called Sorted Sprite Tutorial. This is going to implement the screen interface as usual. Yep, yep, yep. And there we go. So the first thing that we need to make a sorted sprite tutorial is actually, you guessed it, a sorted sprite. And for this we're going to create an uh, inner class of this one here called uh, static class sortable sprite extends sprite because it's still a sprite, it just has the possibility to be sorted. Um, what do we want to sort these sortable sprites by? Uh, this is going to be a Z index. Pretty simple. It's just the Z index to actually sort them because this is not 3D space, it's just an index. But anyway, you can probably imagine this. Uh, then we need some, uh, what's it called? Some constructor, exactly. And that's going to be sortable sprite. Take in a texture and the Z index. You can make any kind of constructor you want. This one is just short and so I'm going to use it. At first I'm going to create the super class sprite using the texture and then set this Z index to the Z index given. Okay. Um, then we might also want to have some getters and setters for Z. And there we go. A getter and a setter. Zetter, setter. Um, and that's actually it for now. So at first, before we can do anything, uh, I don't want to confuse you doing this later, so I'm going to create a sprite batch right here. And import it and do all the render stuff that you already know. gdx.gl.gl .gl clear gl 2.0.gl clear uh, gl color buffer bit and batch.begin and batch.end and in show we don't have to do this actually because I already created the sprite batch up here but I want to dispose it so batch.dispose okay so now we have a sprite batch and the possibility to create some of these sortable sprites let's actually go ahead and create some of these sortable sprites and put them in an array. So we need an array and this array class of libgdx already provides the possibility to sort something as we can see right here. They also have an array of these sprites and sort them using a method uh, that this array already provides. So we're going to use that exact same method pretty much and uh, create an array of sortable sprites called sprites. This is going to equal a new array of sortable sprites. Not sprites. Actually, what am I doing? It happens if you talk and type at the same time. So there we go. Now we just have to put actually some of these sortable sprites in there. Uh, let's go into the show method and some loop over this whatever 100 times. Just the most simple for loop you can imagine. Every time we want to create a sortable sprite, sprite equals new sortable sprite and as you know the uh, constructor is taking a texture which I'm getting from assets.drop. Um, I don't know where you get it from but I get it from here and z index and that z index is just going to be minus i. So 
You could also say I, but that's not going to be very interesting because they sort exactly the way they are in already, I think. So I'm just going to set it to minus I. Um, next, we actually want to take this sprite and put it into the array. Um, sprite.add <laughs> sprite. And um, you can imagine that we now have all the same sprites just with a different z-index so they are all the same position and we can't really see any of them just one the one that's on top so let's offset their position a little bit uh, and I'm t I was taking the wrong thing sprite.setPosition and just set that to i i so every spy sprite gets offset by one pixel and we can actually say i times times two yeah why not this is offsetting them by an exponential rate or whatever, but the main point is that they are offset. Um, okay, so we have this. Next, let's actually uh, go ahead and draw these sprites. At first, we can take the sprites array and shuffle it, which does exactly what it says. All the elements are going to be thrown in whatever order so we make sure um, they are not in the correct order for now uh, for now we actually want to go ahead and display this so we need another enhanced for loop um, getting sortable sprites called sprite out of the sprites array sprites and draw them on the batch very simple I think this is everything we need to already display this. Of course they are not sorted yet, but who cares. So there we go, sorted spread tutorial. And you can see they are there, but they are totally shuffled, just like we said, they should be shuffled. Um, here are a few, here's one, here's one, and they're all around the place. So our task now is to actually sort them. And there is this method right here. Uh, let's yeah let's put it in the show method because we don't shuffle them any anymore we just have to sort them once set sprites dot sort and there are two versions of this method the first one um, takes nothing and the second one takes a comparator of sortable sprites so I don't know what what we should do we let's actually say we create this comparator um, I'm just going to call it comparator or whatever and we obviously have to create this thing so let's go right here and say private comparator of sortable sprite comparator equals new comparator of sortable sprite Now we have to import it and overwrite a method called compare to. What? Not compare. Well, it actually doesn't matter if we take the compare method. Oh yeah, we have to take the compare method. Okay, so we have the sprite uh, called object1 and object2. Let me just change it into something like sprite1 and sprite2 because I can. And then um, the actually comparing should happen. So how does this comparator compare stuff? It has this compare method that's going to be called by the um, array here and it returns an int. So in, uh, zero means um, they are equal in whatever they want to compare them with. We want to compare their z so we return zero if their z's are equal. But we don't want to do that. We actually, uh, actually want to do something like this if sprites1 z so we need to take get z is bigger than sprite2 z then we want to return 1 else if sprite1's z is smaller than sprite2 z we want to return minus 1 and if nothing of this is the case, we want to return zero. But instead of having these else ifs going on, we can do this um, way faster 
by just saying we take the sprite once z and subtract sprite two z um, and if that is still bigger than zero we want to return one else we want to return minus one and if nothing of this is happening we want to return zero but whatever Yeah, we could also say we could do it perfectly. Sprite one to get that. Um, sprite two to get that. Um, so um, if it's bigger, we want to return one. But if it's not bigger, we want to see if it's smaller. So s one dot get z minus s two dot get z. If that is smaller than zero, we want to return minus one. And if none of these is the case, so if these s are equal, we want to return zero. So this is the perfectionist way to do this. Okay, so we have this comparator set up here, and this can actually compare two sortable sprites that we give its compare method. This is exactly what the sprites.sort method is going to do. Now we just have to see uh, if it actually works. So let's go ahead and start this up. And yeah, they are, uh, they are sorted. Previously they were not. What's with this visual VM always? Previously they were not. So let's just see that it's actually happening. We take the sort one out, go back in there, reload the screen, and yeah, every time they are sorted differently and not in a good way. So what is happening? My computer is totally crashing now just because I reloaded the screen a few times. That's not funny. Oh, it's actually totally crashing now. Oh, that, that's great. Awesome. So my PC just totally crashed and yeah, you probably saw it. But anyway, um, I reverted everything back to where we have been. Uh, it should be like this then. Um, and I just noted that actually why do I do all this subtracting stuff and it's fine like this just if s1z is bigger than s2z return 1 else if it's smaller return minus 1 and if it's the equal return 0 that's fine as well we don't have to subtract stuff I don't know what I've been doing anyway um, I wanted to show you that this is actually working so let's just start this up again and hope that this time everything goes fine which I guess will happen because I also reduced the number of sprites to 25 and there it starts up and there is the sorted sprite tutorial and there we go they are sorted so um fine get out okay now what I wanted to show you real quick in the end is that we don't have to pass a comparator in here there's a method that takes no arguments but to use it um, as the documentation says, the array elements must implement comparable. Um, that's not really a problem, we can just go ahead and do that. Um, for We don't need the comparator then anymore, because we are not passing it in the method there, in the compare method, the sort method. So, uh, but the elements must implement comparable. So let's go and implement comparable for sorted sprite and actually sortable sprite quickly add the unimplemented methods of this interface which is just compare to but I think it belongs over there looks better all right so this just takes another sortable sprite which just uh, which I'm just going to call O for other and we can pretty much do the same comparison here so it just takes one sortable sprite because we already have the other one we are calling compare to of a sortable sprite. So we're just comparing this sortable sprite to this one here. And the comparison is really simple. Just if z is bigger than other dot get z, we want to return one. Else if z is smaller than other dot get z, we want to return uh, minus one and else zero. So that's basically the same comparison just in another place 
which makes more object-oriented sense because um, sortable sprite has the compare to method and that just makes sense. So uh, we also don't have to pass it in the sort one here all the time. We don't even have to instantiate our own comparator because we already did when we um, instantiate this uh, sortable sprite using the comparable interface. Um, anyway, so now it should look exactly the same as before. Let's go ahead and try it out. And there we go, it looks exactly the same as before. And still, um, if I didn't sort them, they would not be sorted, as you can probably imagine. Yep, they aren't. So, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next episode. I hope you understood everything correctly, and yeah, until then, have a great day.